I'm going to be talking about material that's published in uh, three different books um, and um, that takes me to some thinking that I'm trying to do to move beyond what I've, what I've done. Um, so I'm using what's been done to sort of escape from it and explore something new. I'm also looking at um, the interface between law and culture, society, polities, Aboriginal peoples, Indigenous peoples from a variety of levels, from the macro to the micro, based on um, ethnographic research in um, an Aboriginal community in northern Manitoba, where I lived for two years, doing the sort of the classic gig of uh, anthropology, where you enter the, uh, the community, you navigate it, um, you let your presence be known, you observe for the extended period of time. But it's also based on institutional ethnography um, in a variety of international fora, a working group on indigenous peoples, um, consultations on the permanent forum um, and the permanent forum itself. I'm thinking about the law not just as reflecting um, well, we're calling it culture. But let's call it, for, for my purposes, people's cultural attachments and identities. Um, it's not just reflecting it, but it's acting to shape it in a kind of a collaborative process. And I'm thinking about the pressures that are at work behind that. And I'm also thinking about how those pressures might relate to the effectiveness of compliance or compliance processes of rights at a variety of levels, both the state's obligations to communities and to the international norms to which states have, uh, have uh, signed on to, um, human rights in particular. Now, um, the title, When Law Encounters Custom and Custom Encounters Law, is sort of fortunate for what I plan to do. It sounds sort of like a palindrome, and I've, I've moved from, from discussing three things to discussing two, and it's a kind of a, a classic um, contrast, okay? A dualism, if you want to call it that, right? Um, I'm looking at, I'm thinking about... Um, an inherent jurisdiction lawmaking process that occurred in the Cree community of Cross Lake, Manitoba. And I'm comparing that or thinking about a comparison with um, cultural lobbying or activism as another strategy of bringing about um, rights compliance. And how do these two things work? How is their consultation involved? And how do the, both these processes shape community identities and cultural attachments? 